Nothing says summer like a juicy butter soaked cob of corn. Unreal. It's still freezing cold out now, but I can't wait to be picking my own this summer. This annual grass is a simple crop, albeit intensive, with a couple of hard rules to follow to be successful. There's two ways to plant corn in your backyard garden. I'll cover both of them today in part one of this two-part corn video growing series. So let's cue the music and dive right in. Almost broke my hand. Are you okay? <laughs> Native to southern Mexico, corn, for better or worse, is the single most produced crop in the world. Over 30% of the world's corn production comes from the United States alone. Impressive. As a warm weather plant, corn produces these large inflorescences known as ears. And it's inside these ears that the plant hides what we're after. Hundreds of tiny fruit seeds known as kernels. So how do we actually get from this to this. Well, there's two ways. Let me show you both. Corn is one of the fastest growing plants that you can grow in your backyard. As such, it's traditionally directly sown right into your late spring garden. And with direct seeding, we have our first planting method. Growing your corn successfully is all about spacing, timing, and of course, soil and water. To get started right, let's begin with the soil. Corn absolutely requires a rich, loamy, loose, well-drained soil that's high in nutrients, but also high in moisture-holding organic matter. If you have a compost, corn is most definitely one of those crops that's gonna benefit huge from amending your soils, both at the beginning of the season and throughout the year. Just mix in that compost thoroughly one to two weeks before planting, or top dress after the seeds have sprouted, and again in midsummer. With our soil and nutrients now set, let's look at the water. Before we get to it though, I need to set it up so that you can see why water is so important to corn planting. Corn needs high temperatures to germinate. In fact, unlike some other crops, corn actually needs high temperatures to even put the seeds in the ground. You see, unlike other crops like say peas or beets, where the seeds will just lie dormant, waiting for warmer temperatures, corn will actually just rot in the cold soil. Because of this, many gardeners will have to wait until late spring before they can plant their corn seeds. And with that later planting comes drier weather. So not only will I pre-soak my beds prior to planting, for the greatest success, I'm also gonna soak those corn seeds for up to 24 hours to really aid in that germination. Okay. It's planting time. The rule of thumb to avoid that seed rot that we talked about is that soil temperatures need to be at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or above. I actually aim for 55 degrees and above, which means your air temperatures should be above 60. For my region, which is Victoria, BC, that means I'm direct sowing corn in late April, early May. Corn is planted one inch below the soil surface and six inches apart in the row with rows being one foot apart. Once germinated, corn is thin to a one foot spacing all around. Tight spacing for such a large plant, but this is by design. Corn is 100% anemophilous, meaning it's exclusively wind pollinated. To ensure that we actually get cobs of corn with the maximum amount of kernels inside, we need this tight spacing. Even though the corn plant, those corn stalks are huge, they only produce one to two ears per plant. So we really need to maximize the harvest. Further to that, corn should be planted in blocks of at least 15 plants for these same reasons. Knowing that, we'll be thinning our rows to half the density after germination. So I'm gonna wanna start at least 30 seeds. Good stuff. Lightly mulch those cedar rows after you're done planting and give one last soaking for good measure. Your corn should germinate in one to two weeks, depending on the temperatures. So that's the direct sowing method pretty much all covered. In video number two, after germination, we're gonna get into the maintenance as well as the harvest. 
The second method for growing epic backyard corn is to pre-start those seeds early indoors, much like you would your tomatoes or peppers. Corn is a fast growing plant that doesn't really need that head start that those other summer crops do. Nonetheless, there are advantages to sprouting them early. Obviously, with germinating them under a watchful eye indoors, you can ensure a higher rate of sprouting success, as well as being able to weed out and cull the underperforming ones. But by far my biggest reason for starting my corn early indoors is that it allows me to multi-crop the area outside before they go in. That is, I can essentially steal a bonus crop between the dormancy of winter and when those corn plants get brought outdoors. Peas, beans, carrots, beets, lettuce, spinach, so many possibilities, all because I'm growing corn elsewhere for the early part of its life. With directly sown corn being planted about two to three weeks after your last spring frost, indoor corn has a much larger window of opportunity of when it can be planted. You can plant it to mirror that same window of two to three weeks after your last frost, just as the direct seeded ones, or you can opt to start them a little bit earlier to give them that head start and be harvesting your corn a little bit earlier. But not only that, if you have a crop still growing where that corn's about to be planted, you can hold off and wait till that crop is ready to be harvested. My preference is to start my indoor corn about a week or two before your last spring frost, making it about a month earlier than its outdoor counterparts. In years past, I would simply plant the corn in those professional seedling plug trays and then move them on to Florence nursery pots a couple weeks after germination. And while I found that corn is not really susceptible to transplant shock, my new method for planting these is even easier with even better results. To start, you're gonna need a proper seeding mix, readily available at all the stores, especially right now. Alternatively, you can make your own with a 60 to 70% coconut fiber and 30 to 40% organic compost mix, add in a little perlite for drainage, and you're set. Here's where I've changed things though. For my seedling pots, I've gone completely biodegradable. Instead of digging out those corns and planting them up this way, I can make a self-contained plug with these paper towel roll pieces and never disturb the roots of the plants. It's super easy, let me show you how. Take a four inch section of your paper towel roll and cut four slits on the bottom. Fold those slits in and voila, a mini plant pot that's not only plastic free, but extremely functional. Let's make a bunch and then plant up our corn. Once you have as many as you need, start filling them to the surface with that seeding mix that we talked about before. Fill all the way to the top, nice and full. You could plant now, but it's far easier to soak the soil first. Add in an inch or two of water and let it sit for about an hour. Because they're in these paper towel rolls, they're taking in water not just from the bottom, but also the sides. All right, with that soil good and moist, make your one inch depression right in the center of each of the mini pots. Place the corn seed in and cover it back up. The definition of easy peasy. Corn germinates best between 75 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's easily accomplished with a simple seed heating mat. Within a week or less, your corn will begin to sprout. Once sprouted, the growth actually picks up speed and grows at an accelerated rate. Normally, if you time things right, these plugs can be planted right into your garden around a month after the last frost. This way, you'll be slightly ahead of the outside directly sown corn. However, if you started your corn a little bit too early and they're already outgrowing these little paper towel plugs, well then you're gonna need a transition step for them. That's where these guys come in. Biodegradable paper cups. Continuing with the theme of not disturbing the root system, your little paper towel plugs can be dropped right into these guys super easy. Poke around five holes in the bottom prior to planting and fill about halfway with a nice rich potting mix. As you can see, many of these guys already have crazy little root systems poking out the bottom. As such, let's go ahead and soak those paper cups before planting. Nothing's worse for your brand new little plant roots than going into some dry soil. Really get that soil good and wet 
we want to provide the optimal conditions for our roots. Shouldn't take more than a couple of hours and we'll be ready to plant. To plant, simply place that paper towel corn plug right in the center of that paper cup and fill back in with that same soil mix. Pack it down firmly but carefully to consolidate the planting. Once again, the corn is going to respond with exponential growth as new nutrients become available with that new potting soil. Give your young corn plants as much light as possible and this one is important, air motion. Outside planting is imminent and we need these leaves and their cuticles to start the hardening off process to avoid any setbacks with that transition to outdoor life. Phew, that was a relative cornucopia of information. On the two methods of planting corn, with both having their merits. There was a lot covered there, so let's do a recap so we don't miss anything. Okay, good stuff. I really do like the temperatures to be in the high 60s before I take my pre-started corn outside. So the actual planting, maintenance, and harvest of these guys is gonna have to wait till video number two. Hopefully, I've sent you on your way to your own successful corn crop this year, and I'd love to see you back in video number two with your plants up and running. Hey, if you have any other corn starting tips that you'd love to share with the awesome community, leave it in the comments down below. Also, if any of you are on Facebook, head on over and join our gardening group called Growing Better. The group has grown phenomenally fast, yet it will never lose its sense of community or its welcoming feel. If you're passionate about growing epic organic fruits, herbs, and veggies for you and your family, the Growing Better group is a great place to hang out, share, learn, and grow. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're getting value in this and the other series that I'm doing on YouTube, hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons if you'd be so kind, and I'll see you in the next video.